My name is Aaron Massey, and today I'm going to show you how to build and install this DIY modern pendant light fixture. Right now I have this really dated looking light fixture in my entryway, and I want to update it to something a little more modern. So to get started, here's what we're going to need. We need some kind of surround for our pendant light. My girlfriend found this geometric terrarium at World Market, which is perfect because it has a metal bottom and is open on the top. It's a lot easier to cut through metal than glass, so keep that in mind when you're looking for something to fit your style. We're also going to need a pendant light kit. I was originally going to assemble these parts from scratch, but this whole kit was 15 bucks at Home Depot, so it didn't cost much more and it saves a lot of work. We're also going to need a light bulb. I like the Edison style and this light kit is rated for 60 watt max, but if you like a different style, you could go with that as well. For the tools we're going to need, we've got a drill and drill bits, a tape measure, razor blade, a straight edge, a one and three quarter inch hole saw, some screwdrivers, wire strippers, and black spray paint. First thing we're going to do is we're going to modify our terrarium so that it can handle our pendant light kit. I start by scraping off the little uh, sticky tab things that protect the bottom of the thing. We don't need them, so I'm going to take them off. With those out of the way, I start to lay out where our center point is on the bottom of our terrarium. We want the hole for our pendant light kit to be at the center of the bottom of the terrarium. So I measure and mark the center of the bottom, connect it with the top of the pentagon, and then draw a line straight down. Next I'll measure that line and figure out where the halfway point is between that. Then I know I can pre-drill a little pilot hole with a 5 16 drill bit directly in the center of the bottom of our terrarium. Now we're going to use that pilot hole as a guide for our hole saw. We're going to stick our hole saw down into the pilot hole and then slowly start to spin our hole saw cutting a nice clean circle out of the metal bottom. With the hole cut, now we can test fit our pendant kit and make sure everything fits according to plan. The nut that fits over the light socket itself should be slightly smaller than the hole we drilled so that it can recess itself up into the hole we drilled. Once we test fit all our components and make sure that everything fits according to plan, we're going to take everything back apart and then spray paint the components so that everything is the same color. Once the paint is dried, we'll screw everything back together, add our light bulb, and then the majority of the build is actually finished. To adjust how low our pendant light actually hangs, there's a small set screw on the base plate of the pendant kit that you loosen up and then you pull the excess wire through. My ceiling's pretty low, so I know I can't have it hanging that low, but if you have a higher ceiling or it's for something like a dining room where there's a table underneath it, you might be able to let it hang a little lower. For now, I'll leave it as is and tighten down the set screw, but I won't cut off any excess wire until I get it in place and make sure that it's the right length. With our build finished, now we can focus on the install. The first thing that I'll do is turn off the breaker that powers the light. Next, I'll remove the old fixture. I'm not going to throw it away because somebody might want it, but it's not for me, so I'll find somebody else to give it to. Luckily, this wiring is actually pretty new. It's not the original wiring with the house. There are some issues with it. For example, this is a 20 amp circuit, and you can tell that by looking at the breaker. You'll notice the wiring that's coming out of the light is in a white sleeve. That immediately gets my attention because back in the late 90s, they changed the electrical code so that any wiring that's on a 20 amp circuit, which is 12 gauge wire, has to be in a yellow sleeve. So looking at this, I know either this wiring is at least 16 years old, or it's the wrong sized wire for the size circuit. Looking closely at the wire, you can see it says 14 on the side of it. That means it's 14 gauge wire on a 20 amp circuit, which is not up to electrical code. This isn't hugely concerning for me, only because we only have a single 60 watt bulb light fixture, which doesn't have much of an amperage draw, but it is wrong and something I'll probably go back in and fix later. If you do want to learn a little bit more about residential electrical basics, I did a live show a while back and I'll put a link to that in the description below. So back to the install. Next, we're going to attach the new plate that comes with the pendant kit, and then we're going to eyeball and see how low our pendant light hangs to see if we need to adjust it and bring it up a little higher. Once we have the fixture to the length we want, then we can cut off the excess wire, leaving a few inches so that we can cut back the casing to expose the wiring underneath, and then start connecting the pendant wires to the existing wiring. When wiring the light together, white goes to white, black goes to black, and the green and bare copper go together at the ground screw, which is the green screw on the plate. Lastly, we push everything up into the electrical box, and then we align the bolts and tighten down the nuts that come with the pendant kit. Once we finish the install, the last thing to do is go back and turn the power back on at the breaker, flip the switch, and test out the light. And we are finished with this project. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you enjoyed this project, please hit that like button and leave a comment down below and let me know. Also, be sure to follow me on social media via the links in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this DIY sliding barn door from scratch.